Ciao e benvenuti a questa lezione di italiano per principianti. Welcome to a new lesson for beginners. Lesson on Italian present tense. First time we are tackling verbs. Finally, now you have the most solid foundation that any beginner has ever had because you've taken the time to understand the main concepts of learning Italian and you're doing it right. And you're also doing a ton of immersion, which makes me very proud. If this is the first time you see me, my name is Manu Venditti. I'm the founder of this channel and the brand Italy Made Easy. And we help English speakers become fluent in Italian by providing a crazy array of courses and resources over at italymedeasy.com. Go and check it out. This is lesson 11 of this mini course that it's available for free here on YouTube. It's important that you watch the first 10 videos, right? The main thing about Italian verb tenses in general is the idea of conjugation, which sometimes is a little scary at the beginning, but that means that every verb is conjugated, has a different form depending on who is performing the action. You might say, this is crazy, why would you do that? I'll show you that you do it too, sometimes. But that's the thing, that's what makes Italian verbs a little bit difficult for English speakers at the beginning, but there are so many tricks and patterns that I will make it easy for you. Obviously, I mean, that's why I'm here, right? So, Italian verbs are usually taught as in being three main groups. There's actually more, but th we do have three main groups of verbs. We have verbs that end in are. So that you would have a verb that like parlare, probably heard that word, parlare, to speak. Parlare is an are group. You will love the are group because it's the largest group of Italian verbs and they tend to be regular a lot. So most are verbs will be regular, which means you can just learn how they work. And once you learn one, you learned all of them. That's pretty good, right? So. And that's the largest group, so you will not need to struggle too much with the largest group. It's like, ah, oh, that's really good. Very reliable pattern because there's only a small, small group of irregular verbs in this one, which means that every other are verb that you come across, because you hear it, because you look it up, you, we can kind of guess how to conjugate it. Not just in the present tense, in other tenses as well. It is the easiest group. And like I said, the 80%. It's, it's a made up number. I mean, I don't know exactly if it's 80%, but at most verbs that you need will be from this group, except for the top 10, which are usually irregular and you will learn them in the future. So we are starting your journey with Italian verbs with Italian present tense. And you might be asking, but isn't it too simplistic and limited to just know the present tense? It's not. Italian present tense covers so many scenarios. We use it in Italian a lot more than you use it in English. And so the Italian present tense will have you covered for a long time before you learn how to speak in the past tense. You're actually pretty good with the present tense. It covers concepts like generic statement. I'm Italian. I'm short. I'm tired. Generic, right? An action being performed right now. So in English you'd say, I'm speaking, I'm talking, I'm going to this and that. In Italian, present tense will convey that idea. And future statements. So in English, you'll say, next year I'll go to Italy. In Italian, we'll say, we say something like, next year I go to Italy. So the present tense, super useful. So oh, here's examples. I live in Scotland. That's a generic statement, present tense in Italian. My car is red, generic is a description, present tense. I'm studying Italian. See, in English you use something else, you don't use the present tense. In Italian, we use the present tense. Uh, my parents are coming to visit. That's kind of a futuristic kind of tense. Still present tense in English, but they, they are coming is actually a way of expressing the future in English. In Italian, present tense. Next year I'll go to Italy, present tense in Italian. Next year I'll be going to Italy. Look at that messy tense. We don't even have that tense in Italian. So present tense. I want to talk about the big picture of verb conjugation in Italian. And I know that many learners of Italian come to the language freaking out of, I need to learn all, all of these verbs. We actually have fewer tenses than you have in English. That I'll be coming to Italy is an example of how you have way more tenses that make it difficult for us learning English because you express so many nuances with tense choice and we don't. We have fewer options, so 
that makes it easier because many concepts that in English you have a different tense for, they all come to one tense in Italian. What makes Italian tense is difficult is that conjugation concept. And so let's look at how to conjugate. Done. I told you, you'd be done by then, by the end of this lesson. So we actually do this in English too, especially in the present tense. Perfect way of explaining this to say, so that you understand how we do it in Italian. We have the verb to speak. What is to speak? In linguistics, it's called an infinitive. This is the dictionary entry of the concept of speaking. So if you were to look it up on a dictionary, you would look up speak and then you would say to speak. So that is the infinitive. But then when we use it, what do we do? We don't say to. We, that to doesn't, doesn't really carry any unique information because we got to speak, to go, to swim, to dream. They're all the same. That to is common to all verbs, so it kind of means nothing. So we, we drop it. So we're left with speak. That is the main verb that we actually use. So when we want to say that he's doing it, we say he speaks. We take the S consonant and we attach that to the verb because in the third person in English, for he and she and it, we add S or ES, depending on the verb like goes, that's ES, we attach those to say that he's doing it. If I was doing them, I'd say I speak. He speaks, I speak. That is conjugation in English. We do that in Italian, right? So how does it work in Italian? We have an infinitive. Infinitives will end with either are, which is the one that you're learning today, but then other groups are ere and ira. But you can tell it's a verb because you get used to the are ending. Parlare is the idea of speaking. Didn't I say that all verbs end with are, ere or ira? So that are part is not really unique doesn't carry any information other than this is the infinitive, this is the main concept of the verb. So what is left when we get rid of it is parl. That is the stem of the verb. That is what really carries the meaning of speaking. So parl is where we start from. So if I want to say he speaks, in English you attach s. In Italian we attach a. There you go. Done. Goodbye. Arrivederci. So lui parla. He speaks. Perfetto, no? So this is the basic idea. Now, it's more complicated because we have a different ending depending on who the subject is. Whereas in English, you only have it for the he and she. But it's the same idea. So it's a two-step pro uh, process. First, you remove the ending of the verb are, ere, or ire. There's also small groups that have a little, you know, little different. You'll learn those when you join a course with us, hopefully. But that's the idea that you remove the are, ere, ire, because that doesn't really have a unique meaning. And then you attach subject specific endings for each subject. And the beauty is that once you understand it today for the present tense, it works the same for all other tenses. There are different endings, but they are very consistent. They're very logical. So you'll be fine. Infinitive. Infinitive is what we call, as I said earlier, the pure form of a verb. It's the dictionary entry. It's kind of limited in use. Think about how many times do you use to speak in English? You know, you say, I, sp I speak, I spoke, they're speaking. Like that idea of to speak is only used when? Well, rarely when you say to speak or not to speak, but we don't say that much. We use the infinitive of, of a verb when it's part of a sentence where there was already a conjugated verb, like he likes to speak. I want to speak. She wants to speak. So that is the main use of the infinitive in English and same in Italian. So you need to learn to conjugate. You need to find the stem, which is basically the infinitive minus are, ere, or ire. So that's you, you've learned that. And once you have the stem, you have the thing that carries the meaning that you're going to use to attach all the endings. So let's look at the endings for the present tense. When the subject is io, so if you're speaking about yourself, your verb will be the stem of the verb followed by o, the o sound. When you're speaking to a person in front of you and you are casual with them, so they're friends or family or children or pets, you will use the e ending. E. Don't get overwhelmed. We'll get to the end and I'll give you examples, of course. Now, when the subject is lei or lui or lei formal, meaning you, sir, you, ma'am, the verb has to end with when the subject is noi, so we are performing an action, like we are speaking, we are dancing, we are kissing, we are eating, 
Your verb will end with yamo, yamo. When you address a group of people in front of you, like just saying you guys, then your verb will end with ate, ate. Finally, when you're talking about them, objects or humans, like they over there, like not me or you, not us, the ending will be ano, mm, ano. So how does it look in real action? Like here's what it is. Parlare, we take parlare, we remove are, we're left with parl, that's the stem of the verb, and then we say parlo, io parlo. We took the stem and we attach the o ending because it's the ending for whenever you're speaking about yourself. I created a mnemonic when I was teaching uh, at the university and it seemed to work, so I'll say it just in case it works for you. Think of yourself in a swimming donut all the time to remind yourself that whenever you speak about yourself, you have to end the verb with the O. The donut is you. You're always wearing a donut. It's, oh, maybe you're always eating a donut. I don't know. <laughs> that would be me. But io parlo. I said earlier that we don't need to specify the subject in Italian. As a super beginner, at, you know, at lesson 11, I say get used to conjugating the verbs with the subject because it's going to help your brain create that link between I'm doing it and the, and the verb that I say is parlo. So for now and for the next few months maybe, it's okay if you have the subject before the verb because it's going to help you retain the concept. So parlo, io parlo. I speak, I'm speaking, I'll speak, I'll be speaking. Tu parli. So we took the stem and we attached the i. Parli. Now, the mnemonic that I created for, for, for my students was when you're talking to somebody in front of you, they look like a big I vowel, like it's a stick with a, with a head, like a, with a dot. So when you talk to somebody casually, your verbs must end in I. Parli means you speak, you are speaking, you'll speak. Parli. Whenever you're talking about he or she or you sir, you ma'am, your verb will end with the A sound and so parla. Notice how that parla is the infinitive parlare without the re. So the a is already indicated to you in the infinitive. Why am I telling you this? Because we only have five vowels in Italian and we seem to have already used three. So we're going to run, run out of vowels and it's best if you link one vowel with one subject and you become really comfortable with that. Two months from now, you're not going to need this information, but you know, while you're building your practice. So, Anytime he's doing something, or she's doing something, or you, sir, or you, ma'am, are doing something, a is your go-to vowel, parla. He's speaking, she's speaking, you're speaking, you, sir, are speaking. Noi, I said that the ending is yamo, and so parliamo. Parliamo is we are speaking. We'll speak. Or even the beauty of noi is that it also means let's. So parliamo means let's talk. You may have heard Italian say andiamo, that means let's go. Mangiamo means let's eat. So this is the common let's kind of verb and it's yamo. Now voi, you guys, the ending is ate. And so to say you guys are speaking, I would say parlate, parlate. And here's the little, like little trick to remember because at the beginning it's hard. Look at parlare, look at parlate. Same spelling except for the R has become the T. So parlare, to speak, parlate, you guys speak. So if I said, I'm going to throw a verb at you, like, you ready? You ready? To buy is comprare, comprare. How would you say you guys buy? Comprate. You take the infinitive par comprare and you change the R for the T, comprate. So parlare has become parlate, you guys speak, you guys are speaking and so on. Now, loro is, ending is ano. One thing that it's important because 99% of my English speaking students have done this and they do this. The stress is never on the ano part. So you have to put the stress of your verb somewhere else before. So this one is parlano, parlano, they are speaking, parlano. Not parlano, that is always wrong, parlano, they are speaking, they'll speak, they, they speak, loro parlano. So, you have cantare, that's to sing. You remove are and then you attach the o for I'm doing. Io canto. Io canto, I'm singing. Tu canti. Lei canta. Noi cantiamo. 
Voi cantare, I switch the off of the T, cantate, loro cantano, because I don't stress the A uh, of the ending, right? So it's not cantano, it's cantano. So this was cantare. Now, pensare to think. Let's go. You say, io penso. Tu pensi. Lei pensa. He's thinking, she, or she's thinking. You, sir, are thinking. You, may I'm thinking. Noi pensiamo. We are thinking. Voi pensate. You guys are thinking. Loro pensano. You get this right. Pensano. Comprare to buy. Io compro. Tu compri. Lei, lui compra. Noi compriamo. Voi comprate. Loro comprano. So once again, you want to get very familiar with conjugating the verbs in the io because you talk about yourself a lot. So make sure that your verb ends with o. If you're talking to a friend in front of you, make sure that it ends with i. Whenever the subject is a third person, meaning you're talking about he or she or it or you, sir, you, ma'am, you take the verb and you drop the re and you have the conjugated version of the formal verb, if you need, basically, to be formal. Every time we are saying let's do something, your verb will end with iamo, andiamo, mangiamo, parliamo, compriamo. For voi, like I said, you're switching the R of the infinitive into the T, so parlate, comprate, prenotate, mangiate, like that. And for loro, you really need to remember that you never stress the ano part, you put the stress somewhere before in the verb. Now, one thing that I also want to suggest that you do is, while drilling your verbs can be useful on day one when you're learning them like today, so I will recommend that you find a bunch of uh, verbs that end in are in Italian, just go to an online dictionary and say, how do I say this in Italian? And if it ends in are and it doesn't say it's irregular, then you should be able to conjugate it. But the best way to get good at, with verbs is to make small sentences. I understand that you don't have a lot of Italian. We're still laying the foundation before you can go and hit it and really become good. But instead of just saying parlare and say parlo or io parlo, just make a small sentence like io parlo italiano. That's it. At least you said something that is more meaningful and your brain is going to kind of create more connections between parlo and oh, it's me doing it. Or if you want to ask somebody, parla inglese? Do you, sir, do you, ma'am, speak English? Parla, because you're choosing the third person, because you're being formal. Parla inglese? It, it's just going to be a little bit better for you, for your brain to develop your skill. And so instead of just saying, compriamo, let's buy or we buy, or we are buying, just say, compriamo una casa, we're buying a house. So if you can make small sentences, all you need is a conjugated verb. You could probably use uh, an indefinite pronoun, like un, una, uno, and a thing. You probably are learning enough words with your apps, and so do that, and maybe even if your sentences are ridiculous, you know, if you only know strange words, just use those. It's, but at least your brain is going to hear a complete statement. So we wrap up this lesson with a visual of a full conjugated verb. Of course, you don't have the hyphen there in between, like a little dash. But that's just to show you that we are touching endings. And that's all for now. In the next lesson, you are going to learn a bunch of irregular verbs. And you will see how useful they are because they tend to be the most useful verbs that are irregular. So I'll see you there.